that's a massive concept. It seems to be around uh, almost everywhere being involved with cancer. Um, can you tell me what it was that you particularly interested you in hematologic malignancies? Because I, I believe it's quite common. Changes in P53 right. are quite common, so aren't they? So changes in P53 are common in all cancers. And it's these mutations or um, other mechanisms that cause an activation of the P53 pathway that lead to hematologic malignancies and other cancers. And so we're just intrigued at trying to understand how these mutations contribute to tumors. Now, P53 is a tumor suppressor gene. Correct. Now, it can get deleted or it can get mutated. What's the difference and what does okay. it matter? So, P53 is a potent tumor suppressor. And many tumors delete the P53, which just takes P53 out of the picture, and those tumors evolve a certain profile. Um, but P53 missense mutations are much more common than deletion of P53. And these are missense mutations that cripple P53, but they also give P53 additional activities and those lead to tumors that are much more aggressive. So missense means they still have function and it might be a function you don't want. No, yeah, exactly. They don't have the, the tumor suppressor function but they have function that is worse for the tumor. Now here at the American Society of Hematology you've been in a session looking at um, overcoming the barriers of P53 dysfunction to cure blood cancers. What kind of concept can you offer doctors in that quest? Okay. I think the most important concept I can provide is that a, mu a tumor that has lost P53 or deleted P53 is very different from a tumor that has a mutation in P53. These tumors evolve very, very differently. Um, so in tumors that have no P53, you somehow have to reintroduce P53 to get that cell from stopping. But in tumors that have mutant P53, we and others have data now that says the cell is addicted to having that mutant P53. So the mechanism by which you treat that tumor is going to be very different from how you treat a tumor that has deleted the P53 gene. Now it would be great to have, uh, have, have um, treatments, but you actually have have done some work already in a model system that's giving you some insights into right. how you might approach this treatment-wise. Right. So a number of years ago we made the models where we can express some of these p53 mutations in a tissue specific and time dependent manner and so the comparison has is basically what's told us that it's it's much worse to have these p53 mutations what did you do in the study that you that you've so, been doing so, with, with mice so we basically can manipulate the mouse genome and we can make the same kinds of mutations that occur in, in hematopoietic tumors in the mouse and then study what happens to those tumors, how aggressive they are, and, and, and what happens, mm -hmm. how they evolve. Mm -hmm. Now, in cancer therapy, we hear an awful lot about targeted treatments, about molecular approaches. What does P53 have to offer, then, that might be harnessed in the clinic? So critical, I think, is understanding how the P53 pathway is inactivated, OK? And how is it? Okay, well we've talked about deletions, we've talked about mutations that lead to more aggressive cancers, but there's also overexpression of an inhibitor called MDM2. So when MDM2 is overexpressed at high levels, you don't see mutations in P53. So there are some clinical studies in hematopoietic tumors that are basically disrupting the interaction of, of a normal P53 with this inhibitor. And those are in clinical trials right now. What sorts of leads are there then for identifying druggable targets, for example? So we know a lot of the components of the P53 pathway in general. I think where the field has to go now is understanding in hem hematopoietic cancers which of those components are involved because there's tissue specific differences. The way a hematopoietic tumor evolves is very different from the way a breast tumor evolves. And so we know what all the components are. We now have to narrow down and see in the specific cancers which of the components are, are, are um, so messed up. What should doctors then be making of all of this emerging knowledge of P53 and its mechanisms? So I think the first and most important thing that um, cancer doctors have to do is to understand how the pathway is inactivated in the tumor that they're studying. Because how it's inactivated is going to determine what treatment options the patient has.
Mm. And, and, and then what kind of hopes might they have for harnessing P53 to cure patients in the future, do you think? So one idea is to take that mutation in P53 out of the picture so that the tumor implodes. Another uh, scenario is to reactivate that P53 somehow, and there are some drugs now that people are working on that will take a mutant P53 and make it normal. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that are happening right now mm. in the field. And the take-home message for scientists and doctors at the moment in this uh, very fascinating area of research is what? Is understand the pathway in your specific tumor because that's going to tell you how to treat the patient.